Welcome to the Rick Report. It's being brought to you by Tell Ohio Credit Union. I'm Bob McElligot, along with Jody Shelley. The Blue Jackets are going to close out not only their two-game set with the Carolina Hurricanes tonight, but they're also going to close out their four-game homestand with this game. And Jody, I'm sure that what happened yesterday is still stinging the Blue Jackets, losing by a goal. Yes, there was controversy. We talked about it after the game yesterday. But the fact of the matter is the Blue Jackets weren't quite ready for the speed of the Carolina Hurricanes. They didn't adjust to it well enough. They were in their own end too much. And it ultimately, that's what cost them the game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there was an added, you know, discussion there about that one goal. And of course, it was a one goal game and that stings even more. But, you know, they have to play. And and the more important thing is they're really looking for their game. And a lot of times you'll hear the coach say it's not about the result. It's about how we played. Uh, They played okay in, in, in spurts of that game, but there were moments where it just got sloppy. They didn't take the game over and you felt like they could have but they left the door open a little bit for Carolina to come back in or, or get that next goal. And that's where they got stopped. So look for them to improve with that today. I think they're going to play. Uh, they, they've got to jump back on this. And, and the one great thing about playing a back-to-back sequence against the same team that you don't like the result in is that you have a chance to do things a little bit better and be a little sharper. Maybe this is a sequence in this back-to-back s- series that we look back at and say that was the moment where they got their game going and they catapulted into position you know lots of nice goals yesterday line a showed up as advertised with the power play one timer max domi gets a goal uh those were all big moments Flino gets his 200 those are, those are things that needed to happen uh and hopefully the last few games with those things happening now they can just move forward play with a little bit of an edge play with that attitude of uh you know we didn't like what happened but let's let's take it out on the hurricanes yeah you mentioned that the results of this trade with winnipeg starting to show up with line a scoring those two goals but what about jack roslevic this is a guy that kind of quietly is getting himself very acclimated to being a columbus blue jacket yeah i really impressed with his game i mean he kind of tiptoed through the first few games and that's understandable but now he's comfortable with line a and atkinson uh, he's doing a good job in the center ice position he looks uh, like he commands the puck. He commands the presence out there. And and I like how he's being used on the power play. Uh, he's really inserted himself uh, very well. And, and John Tortorella, the head coach and the coaching staff, they've said that they're impressed with his ability to, to not hesitate to use his skill and try to make plays. And and that shows a confidence in the kids. So good for good on Roslovic. Really credit him for, for coming into this situation Uh, not taking a month or two to figure things out, just jumping right in. And I think Line A being here with him, a former teammate, really helps with that. So I love the way he plays the game. And and he's uh, he's almost got a carefree, uh, carefreeness to to watching him. And and I think sometimes you're like, wow, but then you see him get the result of the plays trying to make, and it really adds up. It's fun to watch. I think that Line A thing with him is even more important because – they, they know each other and they played even briefly together in Winnipeg. But, you know, instead of having to search for, can Alexander Texier uh, mold his game to work with line A? Can Max Domi adjust his game to work with line A? Instead of waiting for all those guys to figure out each other, you can just put these two guys together and they've got it. Yeah, and think about line A coming to a completely new town, not knowing anything about it. And one of his teammates and good friends is from that city. And, you know, there's, there's a certain level of, of comfort there, almost like a warm blanket uh, when, you, when you know somebody or you, you work with someone who knows the area so well, introduces you to people, introduces you to places to be and places to live, and then take that on the ice. You know, there's a real connection there in a tough time to make a connection. You know, it really is a tough time for these athletes to get to know each other and hang out. But that's already built in with, with this trade, and I think that's a real, real positive, and that's what we're seeing on the ice. What are you seeing out of the defensive pairing of David Savard and Vladislav Gavrikov? We know they're they're so good and they can be such a good shutdown pair, but they, you know, they're just struggling, quite frankly. It's, to be honest, they are struggling this year. What do you see out of those guys? I see a little bit of in-between. You know, I, I sometimes think David's trying to do a little too much with the puck, and that's where he seems like he's fighting it. Um, and Gavrikov, I'm not sure if there's a communication or reading off of the centerman. If you think about the centermen that they've that have been in the Blue Jackets lineup for the past few years since Gavrikov has been here, they've been drivers. They've been guys that understand the defensive zone, no hesitation. There's almost like there's a shoulder check before they make their initial read and jump, uh, which, is, which is just enough a hesitation to put doubt in their mind. So they're not playing freely. And athletes like Savard and Gavrikov, 
need to play freely without hesitation. And, and right now I just see a little bit of that. And I think it has to do with the center ice because you have, you have new center icemen and in the defensive zone, especially they want the D men to be aggressive, but it's hard to be aggressive when you know, when you're not hundred percent certain that that forward is going to be there to do his job. So it's just a natural thing. Uh, I don't think you put it all both on, on all on them individually. I think it has to do with the system. Well, when you're talking about wanting to play to your identity and all the things the Blue Jackets have been saying the past week and a half or so, um, there's no better example than looking at the Carolina Hurricanes, is there? Because there's not really uh, stars that jump off the page, but what you get is a group that has a concerted effort to go out there and play their hardest and beat you night in and night out. You know what? They really hunt for the walls. I mean, they're a team that when that puck is put in an area, they are on the same page in that regard. They do take a lot of penalties and they have a lot, little bit of sloppiness to the game. But I agree. Their back end is strong. They understand how to get out of their own end. And they're a dump and chase, hunt the puck team, which, yeah, you know, you know what you're getting and it's in your face. And, and still last night, I thought the Blue Jackets were surprised a few times at a little time and space they had on the wall with the puck. Options weren't always there. I think guys away from the puck, for example, defensemen going back to get the puck, two hurricanes on them, looking for an option. Where is it? Not where I need it to be. So away from the puck. We hear that term a lot, and that's where it comes into play. It's 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 vital against the hurricanes that if you don't have the puck, you got to work even harder to get back for that guy that's got to get the puck and take the hit so you can help out. So look for that more today. But I agree, the identity is there. They hunt on the walls and on the boards for the pucks. And they're, they're very f effective in battles. Credit Jordan yeah. Stahl. He's a big veteran guy who I think carries the identity of that team along with Rod Brendamore, the head coach. Yeah, when you talk about a guy going back to get the puck and, and being pressured, and as you're saying, even more so away from the puck, I thought there were a number of times Blue Jackets defensemen got the puck yesterday. They look for a pass they normally would make. Maybe yeah. it's to the middle of the ice. Maybe it's up the wall. And there was always a Hurricanes player in the way there. And so, and, and now they start guessing, what do you do to adjust to that tonight? Well, it's, it's a great question. I think it's very simple. I think that they have to get all five guys back in the defensive zone as quick as possible. And they're called reloads. And usually when you do that, you can cause a turnover somewhere in the neutral zone. But with Carolina, they get it deep before you can get there. So you have to understand that you've got to come all the way back in the zone and work as five to get it out. Options are needed or flips. The flip play is a play that's great. Just get it out of the zone. You know, that's what you want to do with the Hurricanes. Make them play down in their end and put some pressure on the goalie. But but the priority number one for the Blue Jackets as five, even throw the goalie in there as six, is to get out of your own end. Don't let them get in and grind and try to pop that play to the middle of the ice. Grind to get it out yourself and then make them defend below their goal line. That's a key, below the goal lines. All right, tonight's game gets underway at 7 o'clock. Pre-game coverage starts at 6.30 on Fox Sports Ohio and on the Blue Jackets Radio Network. And if you're listening in Columbus tonight, you'll be able to find us on Columbus Alternative 105.7 FM. That'll do it for today's Rink Report. It's been brought to you by Telhio Credit Union. For Jody Shelley, I'm Bob McElligot. Enjoy the game.